on tour, what I often do when the crowds are great, we don't have a lot of crowd today, is I'll stand up on top of the bench here. They don't appreciate that nowadays, but I stand up here and I preach. And so uh, we've got the guys that will come upstairs and shut you down when you do that. So you just kind of do this instead. But, uh, but I, I raise my voice and you'll get a crowd of two or 300 people. And basically you say, let's all read together and note this humanist, socialist, modern, uh, modern thinker, Thomas Jefferson, who we know, believes in modern socialism. Uh, and doesn't believe in God. And as you read each one of these, do you note know they're all about God? And they're all about principle. They're all about limited government and limiting the power of government over the conscience of men. Why? Because Thomas Jefferson was brought up as a Christian. He was, was the, the, one of the major donors to the first Reformed Church during the Great Awakening in Charlottesville, Virginia. Thomas Jefferson was considered a devout believer. Uh, up and he, during the period in his mid 30s when he loses his wife and two children to disease in one year he gets depressed and discouraged it went on for a long period of time he then goes and spends seven years in France well you know you spend seven years in France your life's gonna be ruined anyway uh, so, this is true. I mean you know but you know the, the, the things that you go through when you go through that and then including the enlightenment thinking and all that would go so and then he gets talking with some of the guys a lot of the founding fathers got caught up into this concept of Unitarianism, where they believe they believe in God, the Ten Commandments, all these things, but they just thought that Jesus was the perfect moral teacher, but that he wasn't the Son of God. That's why, in some cases, he would doubt that. You see it late in his life. But I have quotes and principles. Um, this has been written on by the Providence Foundation that is in Charlottesville, Virginia. They are some of the best students of Thomas Jefferson. They believe he was a saved man. I believe he was, too. I believe he was a man who had trial and tribulation in his life. Uh, that, that caused him to doubt some things and he, he had gone through waverings, but I believe he was a believer. And you see it in his writings, you see it in the way he thought. Uh, he was really a protector of our liberties and much more against uh, a powerful government than, than were most of our founding fathers. And Jefferson warned us again and again of the dangers. He observed these wards called townships in New England are the vital principle of their governments and have proved themselves the wisest invention ever devised by the wit of man for the perfect exercise of self-government and its preservation. He said that self-government, he studied in depth the, the, the congregationalism of the North, and he said what we need is religious freedom so that men can then go to their churches, develop local freedom, have their own money, and have their own power, and don't give it to the federal government. He's the one who said we should not have a strong federal government because it will enslave us for sure because he did believe in the fallen nature of man. So again and again in his writings, and you can, if you read him in depth, you'll see that God is in his writings. Not always right, sometimes a little bit skewed, but certainly he was no modern 20th century socialist. And that's what they've attempted to do even downstairs. If you go through it real briefly, you'll see the way they've presented things down there. It makes him look like he's a modern, uh, a lover of big government. In reality, he was exactly the opposite. Of that. So there's many good things about Jefferson that we need to remember. All of our founding fathers are flawed. Everyone that we're going to study is flawed. But what, in essence, did they proclaim to the world and to the nations? I think it was a good message. So anyway, that we, because of the weather, we won't go any further into Jefferson right now. But there's so many good things to say about what he produced in his life. He, as you know, he died on the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence on the same day that John Adams died. That's right. Wow. I know that because you told us that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what's crazy about that, Marshall? Yeah. When James Madison died, it was around the end of June, and they asked him, would you like to sustain your life a little longer so you can die on July 4th? Would you like to? He said, no, thank you. So he died on a day other than James Monroe, the next president. Guess what day he dies on? July 4th. Really? Wow. Not the same year, not on the 50th anniversary, but July 4th. Wow. Can't make that stuff up. Would you like to tell about John Adams and Thomas Jefferson? I have the Pilgrim. When am I yeah. going to die? A Pilgrim Landing. Maybe. July 4th. It's a good story. <laughs> July 4th. I got November. 